year's Cambridge Science Festival theme is big and small. Enthusiastic PhD student Helen Chersky finds inventive ways to show us phenomenon that we would normally find impossible to see. This scene may look very, very peaceful, but what's actually going on on the atomic and molecular level is that it's fantastically busy. It's all zooming around. Lots of things are going on, just too fast for us to see them. So this is just an ordinary balloon that I've blown up and attached to a measuring cylinder. So in here is exactly the kind of air that was all around us all the time. And it's made up of both nitrogen and oxygen. And all those molecules are zooming around at hundreds of miles an hour, bouncing into each other. And because they're bouncing into each other, they're pushing outwards on the walls of the balloon. But in here, I've got some liquid nitrogen, which is very, very cold. And so what I'm going to do is put my balloon next to the liquid nitrogen. And what's going to happen is that all these molecules are going to bump into the nitrogen and give away their energy. And when they don't have as much energy, they get cooler and the balloon is going to shrink. So the balloon's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking as it gets colder and colder and colder. And then when we take it out, and so here now, that's liquid oxygen in the bottom of the measuring cylinder. And that's the stuff that's around us all the time, enabling us to live. Now, if we leave this for long enough, what you'll see is it starts to boil. What's happening now is that the energy from the outside is knocking into those molecules. It's giving those molecules energy. And so they're becoming ga a gas again. And what you can see now is that the balloon is reinflating. Energy is being given back to those molecules. They're moving faster and faster. And soon they'll be up to 900 miles an hour, which is what they had before. So what we've done here is we've slowed those molecules down from 900 miles an hour to about 500 when they became liquid. And it sat there for a bit and we gave it the energy back so they could speed back up to 900 miles an hour and then lies back to normal. So I'm going to show you now how even the fastest things in the universe can be slowed down. And the fastest thing in the universe is light. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light. But light doesn't travel at the speed of light all the time. That's only its maximum possible value out in space. Down here on Earth, and when it's passing through things, light's actually slowed down quite a lot. One of the things that slows it down the most is diamond. And I've got a diamond here, a real one. And what diamond does, it slows the speed of light to less than half of its normal speed. And that's what helps diamonds be so sparkly. But not all, not all um, stones have this property. And what I've got here, I'm going to be uh, very brave and try this, is I've got a lot of fake diamonds here. Now, because they're fake, they won't change the speed of light as much as a real diamond. So I'm going to drop my real diamond in there, among all the fakes. I hope this works, because I, I really would quite like to have it back again. So I've got a mixture of one real diamond and lots of fake diamonds. And if we just look at them, we can't really tell one from the other. So I'm a bit worried I'm going to get into trouble here. But there is a way of doing this, and the way of doing it is to put them all in water. So here's my dish. I'm going to put all the real, the real diamond and all the fake diamonds into the dish together like that. And I'm going to pour some water on top. So you can do this at home if you have a diamond to play with. So we'll have a look and see if we, can, if we can pick this diamond out if we look at the light coming through. And what you'll see is that the water and the fake stones all slow light down by the same amount. So they're pretty hard to see. But our real diamond is going to slow light down by a whole lot more. And so we can see it. There it is. The reason it really stands out is those dark edges. And the reason that they stand out is that it's slowing light down so much it's bending it away from our eyes. So light that would normally be coming from the bulb straight to our eyes is being bent in different directions so we don't see it. And that's why it looks dark. And that's why we can see it. Of course, you couldn't normally see a 2,000 mile an hour collision up close and personal. But with the University of Cambridge's gas gun, our rock hard diamond and a specialist high speed camera, all will be revealed. So this is one of our biggest bits of equipment in the lab. It's a single stage gas gun capable of firing things at thousands of miles per hour. Now this is how it works. At this end here, we've got two big, big gas reservoirs that we can pressurise really, really high pressure gas. We've got a bullet like this and the bullet sits in the back here and then what happens is that we let all that gas go and it pushes really, really hard on the back of the, on the, back of the bullet and it's going to go all the way down the barrel of the gun. The bullet's going to go right down the centre of this barrel. And it keeps pushing and keeps pushing, and it pushes that bullet all the way down the barrel, five metres long. By the time it gets to this, this end, that bullet can be going at up to 3,000 miles an hour. And then what we do is, in here, we have some poor, unsuspecting target 
that doesn't know it's about to be hit. And that would typically look like this. This has got a piece of copper on the back. And after this has been hit at about 1,000 miles an hour, this is the sort of thing that it might look like here. So these are typical samples afterwards. And you can see the copper's been ripped apart around there. Didn't stand a chance. That's what copper looks like after it's been hit at a few thousand miles an hour. So what we have is this catcher chamber here, which is a huge thing. We fill it with rags, and that stops, that catches the target and the bullet together so they don't go shooting off into Cambridge and causing mayhem every day. So here we have a diamond. It's a natural diamond. And we're going to hit this in the gun to have a look at what happens. So it's all set up. We have to fire it outside the room because it makes so much noise. So um, let's have a look at what happens. So let's have a look at the results from that experiment. Now here we have, here are pictures of the original diamond. And this is a sequence that's playing over and over again of the diamond being hit. So what we can see here is that the shock is coming this way, and it's the cracks are coming in from the back. And what you'd expect normally in, a, in our world is that if you hit something on one side, it would crack at that side. But here we can see the diamond is cracking from the other side back towards the thing that hit it. So you think this was fast, but actually events this fast are going on around us all the time. It's just that we're too slow and complicated to perceive them. So let's think about a blink of an eye. It takes about a third of a second to just to blink your eyes, and you do it all the time. And we think that's really, really fast. But in that time, a CD in your CD player will go around 20 times. A hummingbird could flap its wings 30 times. So lots of things can go on. So let's have a look at some of those things. So here's something you've probably seen lots of times before, an ordinary soap bubble. And the forces holding this together are really, really, really strong. And that means that when we um, do things to the bubble, it changes really, really fast, too fast for us to see. So if we now think about dripping water through the bubble, the drips of water are actually going straight through the bubble without bursting it. What happens when we drip water through the bubbles, it looks to us like the drip's just going straight through. It doesn't burst the bubble, but we can't see why because it's happening too fast for us to see. But if we have a look with a high-speed video, we can see that some really unexpected things are going on. So here we've got the high-speed video of what was happening as those water droplets went through the bubble. And you can see that they're going in, they're joining, they're becoming part of the bubble, and then they're dripping out the other side. So this one is falling right through the middle of the bubble. And then as they hit, they're sending these waves around the outside there. Look at that. Loads of complicated things going on every day all around us that are just too fast for us to see.